watching New GHTV. Escobar with Urban Grind TV and I'm here with Jared James all the way from Australia. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure. And you know what? Your first single, do you remember, debuted at number one. However, I know that you're not new to this. You're a vet, a musician. So I want to 
I wonder how does that feel when you put in all this work for over 10 years, right? Yeah, probably about 10 years, I think. Yeah. And then all of a sudden to have this success where that first single just debuts at number one, how does that feel? Oh, uh, it's pretty, uh, it feels weird because you get used to that not happening. Uh, so when it does, you don't really know how to, how to do that, you know, you don't know what, what happens then. Uh, but it's really awesome. It's amazing. And then you follow that right up with Give Me Something. And you release that right away. Now, I know you had a record label, a deal with a record label prior to this, but they put your project on the shelf. Did you feel like you needed to release a second single right away? Um, well, they, to be honest, they didn't actually put it on the shelf. We just had some issues with management and stuff, and, and it sort of stopped happening. But um, yeah, I mean, it, I was just trying to strike while the iron was hot, you know, trying to uh, keep that momentum going. That hot music keep coming. I love it. And you know what? They say that you really know what you love and passionate for when you reach bottom. And I feel like you reached that when you decided to stop doing music for two years. Yeah, that's exactly what happened actually. I, I, I actually didn't want anything to do with music. I got really, uh, really depressed about it and I didn't even want to listen to the radio or put music on in my car. And <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, but that got me back to a point where I fell in love with it again, which was really, really important, I think. That's great, that's awesome. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I'm kind of upset that your EP only had about five or six songs on it for the U.S. market, but that full album is hitting shelves. Oh, we're looking at maybe January, February? Yeah, we'll see. I'm excited for that. And you know what? Every time I hear your music, even if it's the same song, I, I, I hear something different. So I don't know to label it R&B, indie, pop. Does that come from any influences? Uh, yeah, I mean, I listen to so much different stuff. I don't just listen to one genre. I don't think many people do listen to just one genre, but but I try and keep my mind open. Uh, but at the same time, I try not to write stuff that fits in a genre, if you know what I mean. Because I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want that. I don't want it to just be defined by a few words, you know. I know one of your favorite artists is Stevie right. Wonder. That's right. Yeah. So I hear a different kind of music from you in that aspect, but I hear the R&B. Where did that, where did that R&B come from in Australia? Uh, there's not really a lot that comes from Australia, to be honest. There, there's, I don't really have a lot of Australian influences, to be honest. A lot of the music that I always listen to is American, and and uh, and I think Stevie Wonder influenced my, me vocally because uh, I do like to sing with my falsetto and and. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to try and sing along to his stuff, and, and that kind of trained my vocal a little bit. Now, not only are you a singer, but you're a songwriter. And you've said that you, when you write, you tend to switch your brain off and kind of just let it flow. How, can you explain that switching off? Uh, well, I think it's, um, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to creativity and, uh, I know that there's so much back there in the back of my head and when I try and think about getting it out, it doesn't work at all. So I, I try to find this, uh, this sort of state of mind where I can uh, let music affect that and it comes out really naturally and, and, it, and I always start with the music first and then lyrics and melodies come after that. So I think the, uh, the music just, it incites the rest, you know, and it, and it draws it out in a, in a funny way. So unconsciously that's right yeah and you're actually in Chicago not just for the great weather we're having today but to actually perform at the Metro tonight that's right yeah are you excited about that I'm really pumped yeah I'm super excited to see you I could not sleep because of this interview and I believe you only have one more <laughs> you only have one more date left on the tour in the North American tour yeah so there's uh, tonight and then there's Minneapolis I believe and then right. <clears throat> then I'm gonna go to LA for a little bit and do some writing when are you going home? I don't know. Back home, do you miss it? Yeah, a little bit. I love this though. This is great. Um, uh, I think the end of November I'll be home. So for your social media, where can they find you at to find out what's happening with you? Uh, I mean, I'm on Instagram and that stuff. I think it's Jared James K. Jared James Music. What's up next for Jared James? 
Uh, well, I'm just about to go to LA to do some writing, and then um, and then after that, going to London, playing some shows with a artist by the name of Tovlo, who's pretty awesome. And then I'm doing some touring with Jack Garrett, who's an uh, amazing artist that you should, if you don't know, you should look him up. Um, yeah, throughout Europe. So when you're recording your music, do you kind of take the lead from the producer? Or you kind of have your your own sound, or you're open to collaborate. I mean, I'm I'm always open to collaborate. That's the whole point of doing co-writes and stuff. But I do have. Uh, I'm not a writer that sort of sits back and lets other people do things. I like to be a part of everything, and and I I play most instruments, so. I like to be very involved with what I do, and I write all my own melodies and my lyrics, and um, and and I do write stuff by myself and produce some stuff by myself as well. So. Now, have any artists reached out to you to collaborate? And if not, who would you like to collaborate with? Uh, yeah, there's been a few, and and I'm when I'm in London, I'm going to work with someone there that I, I probably am not allowed to mention it yet. But it's yeah, there's always cool stuff that comes up, and and uh, people that are looking for a vocalist on a track and. Yeah, in this day and age, that happens so much, as you'd be aware. Um, but I, you know, I wouldn't. I like to try different things, and I work with most people. Like you. Well, you know what? It's been such a pleasure, Jared. I'm just. If you were a musician and you really haven't made it yet, what advice would you give them? Because I feel your story is one of not giving up. Because you, it seemed like you gave up, but music brought you back. So what would you tell a musician that just is about to give up as well? Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's a hard one, but I'd probably just say be really honest about the music you make. Don't try and don't try and make music so that people think you're cool or some shit like that. Like, make music that naturally comes out of you and try and make it special and emotional and not something that is in at the moment because chances are that'll be out in about three weeks. And I think you can really hear that in your music because every time I hear it, an emotion is evoked in me. Sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's happy, but your music really does sound like that 70s vibe where you're actually getting an emotion, not just, you know, a produced music. So. That's really awesome. That's my intention. So thank you so much for joining me, Sonia Escobar, and Urban Grind TV. Hi, I'm Jared James, and you're watching Urban Grind TV.